Hi. Uh, let's see the part two of the compliance discussion. In the first part, we describe some basic aspects of compliance. Uh, compliance is the measure of stretchability or distensibility of the lungs as a tissue. And we also said it's uh, for the lungs, it is 200 ml per centimeter of water. That is, uh, if the pressure around the lungs is changed by one centimeter of water, then the lungs will distend with 200 ml of air. And that's uh, delta V by delta P relationship. And then we also saw what is dynamic compliance. That is, this delta V by delta P relationship goes on changing uh, during the various stages of breathing. Uh, uh, for, for some stage, uh, we see a good compliance. That is, for a small pressure change, there is a good uh, volume distension. And at some other stage of breathing, the compliance is less. That means, uh, for a high pressure change around the lungs, there is a small volume distension. So, compliance is less. And we also said toward the end that at the start of inspiration, that is, near the lower lung volumes, the compliance is high. Means, for a small pressure change, uh, there will be a good volume distension of the lungs. And then by the end of inspiration or towards the higher lung volumes, the compliance is poor, less. Uh, that is, for a, high, for a good pressure change, for a high pressure change, there would be a low volume distension, less volume distension. So, that is a less compliance. That is what we discussed in the part 1. Now, let us see the applicability of all this. Now, first of all, uh, let us draw this in a graph which is called as compliance diagram. A compliance diagram has been called as hysteresis, the loop of hysteresis. Now, what does that mean? Look, hysteresis is a Greek term, it is a mathematical term. It says, it means the system that does not follow identical paths on application of stimulus, stimulus and withdrawal of stimulus. The path that is followed by the system will be different on application of stimulus and on withdrawal of stimulus. What is the explanation uh, of this? Look, let us consider any other system. If you draw the graph for that system, the graph is a line or a curve or something like this. So, when you increase the parameters, the, uh, the graph goes up with, the, with, the, with this path and when you decrease the parameters, the graph comes down by the same path. So, same path is followed by the system on application of stimulus and withdrawal of stimulus. This is for other graphs, not for the compliance. Compliance, the story is different and for which reason it is called as hysteresis. The system follows different paths on application of stimulus and withdrawal of stimulus. So, let us look at this graph of hysteresis or rather graph of uh, compliance. You know, it is a pressure volume relationship. So, uh, pressure in uh, centimeters of water and volume distension ml that is the uh, pressure volume relationship for the lungs. Let us say minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 7.5. Uh, I am not starting from 0, note that point, I am starting from minus 5. At the start of inspiration, the pressure, the intrathoracic pressure is minus 5 centimeters of water, so I have started from minus 5. And by the end of inspiration, it is minus 7.5. These are average figures, mind you. Different uh, authors will quote different figures. These are average figures. And the volume distension, let us say 250 and 500 ml. That is the volume distension of the lungs. Now, see how the compliance diagram appears. Inspiration, the pressure goes from minus 5 to minus 7.5. That is for the inspiratory curve and then expiration. The graph did not come down from the same path. 
the expiration, the pressure volume relationship for the expiration is following a dif different path as compared to inspiration. So that's first the reason why we called it hysteresis. Now, this is the compliance diagram. Uh, I would also like to add here, you might have seen compliance diagram in some other books and the shape may be different. The, uh, if you recall the shape that you have seen for compliance diagrams may be different. That's because they start from 0 and go to thir minus 30. So, you know, the units taken are different and therefore shape appears to be different. I am only taking minus 5 to minus 7.5, that part uh, or that much pressure and therefore shape is appearing to be slightly different from what you may have seen in other books. Well. But what's the point? The point to be noted here is this. This is the start of inspiration and this is the end of inspiration. You recall from our discussion that at the start of inspiration, the compliance is high. So, see this is a steep part of the curve. This is the steep portion of the curve. The steep portion of the curve tells us this part that is at the start of inspiration, the curve is rising steeply. What is the meaning of that? The meaning is for a small pressure change, the curve is going up rapidly. That means on the volume axis, the curve is going up rapidly. That means for a small pressure change, there is good volume distension. The curve is rising rapidly. That means a good volume distension on the vertical axis. That means it's a good compliance at the start of inspiration. And second part is by the end of inspiration, the curve has become flat. This is the flat portion of the curve. What does that tell you? By the end of inspiration, the flat portion say uh, uh, indicates that now the pressure is increasing see this is a flat curve like this so now the pressure is increasing on the horizontal axis but the curve is not going up on the volume axis it's not going up that means it's a less compliance by the end of inspiration pressure is increasing but the volume is not increasing that much that means delta V by delta P relationship is poor. That means the compliance is less. So at the start of inspiration, steep portion. By the end of inspiration over there, flat portion. Volume not going up. It's flattened up. So pressure increasing, but volume is not going up. That means reduced compliance by the end of inspiration. You can also see that this is the start of expiration, this part is a start of expiration. It starts there, expiration, and this is the end of expiration. You can see here that by the end of expiration, the curve is steepest. In the entire graph, the curve is steepest by the end of expiration. So it may be correct to conclude that at the end of expiration, the compliance is maximum. Highest compliance is by the end of expiration. The distensibility of the lungs is maximum at the end of expiration, that part. So end of expiration, start of inspiration, alveoli are small and the compliance is better, good. Near the lower lung volumes, the compliance is good. Near the higher lung volumes, compliance is less. That is the compliance diagram. Now let us uh, see the clinical changes that can happen in this diagram. What is the clinical applicability? Now, uh, applied physiology or clinical application of this. Compliance is reduced in which conditions? The compliance will be less in certain conditions like uh, let's say massive pulmonary fibrosis or interstitial lung disease, interstitial lung disease. Now, 
uh, remember I gave the example or uh, an analogy of nylon stockings. Lungs are like nylon stockings. What happens is when there is pulmonary fibrosis, a massive pulmonary fibrosis, the lung parenchyma is destroyed and replaced with fibrous tissue. And that fibrous tissue is not that stretchable. It's not that elastic or that stretchable. And therefore, with pulmonary fibrosis, the distensibility, the stretchability of the lungs would reduce. So, compliance is decreased in this condition. Or interstitial lung disease. Even in this disease, uh, in the lung interstitium around the alveoli, there would be uh, deposition of the connective tissue. And then it would be the entire lung would be less stretchable or less distensible. So, compliance is reduced in these conditions. Compliance is increased in which condition? Compliance is increased in the conditions such as emphysema. Emphysema is the condition in which compliance increases distensibility increases. What is emphysema? Uh, it is the, well, the definition of emphysema is uh, dis over distension, over stretching of a tissue with air or gas. That is emphysema. Now, it could happen in any tissue, but it generally happens in the lungs. There are other conditions like surgical emphysema and so on and so forth, but we are referring to the lungs here. Now, in emphysema, what happens is there is over distension of the alveoli. Over distension of the alveoli. The alveolar walls are overstretched. And then finally, there would be destruction of the alveolar septa. Destruction of the alveolar septa. So, uh, alveoli will coalesce to form larger cavities. Now, because uh, initial, uh, in the normal person, these alveolar walls were required to be stretched and distended. After the destruction of those alveolar walls, it slightly becomes easier to distend this large uh, sac that is created. And therefore, uh, the compliance increases, the distensibility initially increases in the condition of emphysema. So, remember, uh, of course, uh, that is not a, uh, that is not essentially a, a beneficial thing to happen because although compliance increases, but the surface area for gas exchange has reduced, you know, alveolar walls have been destroyed. So, gas exchange will be hampered. Right, that is the uh, clinical application. Compliance decreases in certain conditions or increases in certain conditions. How does the graph look? Compliance diagram will appear like this. Let us draw the normal compliance diagram first. The pressure and the volume the normal compliance diagram which we had drawn already. Now, uh, inspiration, expiration. In the certain conditions which are called as restrictive lung disease, there is a group of disorders called as restrictive lung disease. There is restriction to the expansion of the lungs. The restriction to the expansion of the lungs. Or in uh, conditions like pulmonary fibrosis or interstitial lung disease, the lungs are not distending properly and the compliance, the distensibility is reduced. So, in such conditions, the graph will appear something like this. 
the compliance is reduced in restrictive lung disease. The graph goes rightward and downward. The graph has moved downward and rightward. What you can see here uh, is that pressure is increasing, but the graph is not going up on the volume axis. This which we have drawn here is the condition of restrictive lung disease. In restrictive lung disease, the compliance is reduced and the reduced compliance is show, uh, it can be seen like this, that the pressure is increasing, but the curve is not going up on the volume axis. It has become flatter. So that's the change in uh, these conditions or, or in pul massive pulmonary fibrosis, interstitial lung disease and so on. Reduced compliance. Whereas in emphysema, the compliance is increased, the curve will move leftward and upward. Obviously, we are saying compliance is increased, that means the curve will appear like this. It will go up. So, if the compliance diagram pressure volume relationship is going up, this is emphysema, increased compliance. What can you see in this curve which has shifted to the leftward and upward? For a small pressure change, see on the horizontal axis there is pressure. For a small pressure change, the curve is going up very nicely on the volume axis. So, uh, volume distension is increased. It is much better than normal. So, that is an increased compliance. This is the normal curve, reduced compliance going, uh, shifting downward and rightward and increased compliance shifting leftward and upward. The curve has become upright. That means what? On volume axis, it is going up. On the vertical axis, there is volume. So, volume distension is good for us, for even a small change of pressure. For a small change of pressure, good volume distension, the curve has almost become upright. So, that is a change with the um, increased compliance. So, we have seen the changes in compliance and how we can show graphically uh, these uh, changes in the compliance of the lung. Let me add one more thing to conclude over here. Restrictive lung disease patients, how do they breathe? What is the most economical way of breathing in restrictive lung disease? Now look, we are saying that the compliance is reduced in restrictive lung disease. These patients, they prefer to breathe shallow and rapid and near the lower lung volumes shallow and rapid near the lower lung volumes. Remember, compliance is good at the start of inspiration or near the lower lung volumes and compliance is reduced or poor near the higher lung volumes means when you when you inspire forcefully and uh, and you go to the higher lung volumes, the compliance is reduced. Now, in these patients, already the compliance is less. So, they would not prefer to take a forceful inspiration and go to the higher lung volumes where compliance is poor. They would prefer to breathe very shallowly near the lower lung volumes, just short inspired air, that is it, shallow and rapid. They will not take a deep inspiration and go to the higher lung volumes. They will take shallow breaths and they will continue to uh, or they would prefer to breathe near the lower lung volumes where the compliance is better, much better. So, that is the economical way of breathing in restrictive lung disease. We will also see uh, the changes in COPD that happen to the compliance diagram and uh, or the other applications of this in the conditions of COPD.